Hey everyone, I'm Mariana, this is Impression Blend, and I have so many film recommendations for you. I am back from two film festivals that were almost back to back, and today I am here to tell you all about the standouts of Fantasia 2021. I'm sure most of you already know how much I love genre films, so of course I was so excited to once again attend the Fantasia International Film Festival digitally from my couch again. I I ended up seeing 24 films at the festival this year, plus five more that were playing at the festival, but I saw elsewhere. So with a total of 29 films to choose from, here are the ones I think you should definitely keep an eye out for in the near future. Now, the two obvious easy recommendations would of course be The Night House, which I covered in my previous video, and Suicide Squad, which I'm sure most of you already watched. Both of these are absolutely worth your time if you have not seen them yet, but I think you already know that, so let's get to some things you probably have not heard of. I'm starting with a couple of dramas, and this might seem like an unexpected choice, but if you enjoy dance dramas, which I do, you definitely don't want to miss this one. Dreams on Fire is a Canadian-Japanese film about a girl, Yumi, who dreams of becoming a dancer and runs away to Tokyo to pursue her dreams against her family's wishes. Young and inexperienced, Yumi quickly learns that the road to success is long and complicated, but every time one door closes, another opens. This is an inspiring story full of passion, beautifully choreographed urban dance numbers, colorful costumes, music, and emotional moments. The lead performance by Bambi Naka is one you cannot take your eyes off, and she is a famous Japanese dancer, making her leading on-screen role debut here. Sure, it sometimes follows some of those expected genre tropes, and if you're not into the dance style, you might find it too performance-heavy, but the intended audience is going to have a lot of fun with this film. I know I did. Plus, it does often step away from your typical entertainment business Cinderella story, which is very refreshing. If stories that leave you thinking for days are what you're looking for, I definitely think you should keep an eye out for The Righteous. This is the directorial feature film debut from Mark O'Brien, whom you might remember as Alex from Ready or Not. Shot in stunning black and white, this is a parable type of film about a former priest struggling with tragedy and guilt. It's very character driven, but it's the type of slow burn I personally really enjoy. It tackles big questions people have been struggling with for ages. It's dramatic, dark, and every bit of dialogue carries meaning. It almost crosses over into psychological horror, borrowing from the classics visually and thematically when it comes to topics of humanity and the higher power. I also want to point out the cast. Mark O'Brien stars in the film as well as directs it, and it's a very interesting role for him, but Henry Cherney as the lead, Frederick and Mimi Cusick as his wife Ethel both give powerful, layered, dramatic performances that really elevate the film. I can easily recommend this to those of you who enjoy a good, thought-provoking, introspective, moody drama, and for me, this was absolutely one of the most memorable films of the festival. Now, if a cat and mouse thriller is more up your alley, allow me to recommend Midnight, a South Korean film about a young woman and her mother, both of whom are deaf, and the serial killer who is trying to hunt them down. This is definitely an edge-of-your-seat, action-packed thriller that will keep you glued to the screen for the entire runtime, and if, like me, you're a fan of South Korean thrillers, this is obviously one that should be on your watch list. What's also impressive is that this is Kwon Oh Sung's feature film debut. He wrote and directed the film, and it's clear that he has a great eye for creating on-screen tension and keeping his viewers engaged. Midnight has plenty of twists, turns, narrow escapes, and most importantly, it has motivated characters who never stop looking for solutions. If this sounds a bit like Mike Flanagan's Hush, that's a pretty good comparison, though. Unlike Hush, this thriller is not contained 
to a single location, and the amount of times the killer is able to hide in plain sight is incredibly stressful. You know that feeling when you're watching a thriller and you just want to tell the characters, turn around, the killer is right there? That's this movie, especially since the killer seems to have a talent for pretending to be harmless. Obviously, if we're talking about thrillers and horror, I have to once again give a shout out to The Night House, which I already reviewed in this video, so I'm not going to repeat myself here. But as far as that genre goes, this film is the clear winner of the festival and I cannot recommend it enough because it's also one of my favorite films of the year at the moment. If you haven't watched it yet, it's absolutely worth your time. Let me switch gears for a bit and talk about two documentaries that really stood out to me, the first of which is Alien on Stage. Yes, that alien. But the funny amateur theater version. This probably sounds like a very bizarre documentary, and it is, but hear me out, this one is actually really charming, wholesome and heartwarming. Alien on Stage is about a group of British bus drivers who decide to do their own stage adaptation of Ridley Scott's iconic sci-fi horror classic. It's actually fascinating to watch how they try to come up with solutions for the effects, how they approach the set and staging, the alien itself of course, it's pretty impressive considering this is a very low budget production. It's also pretty ridiculous because they are obviously not professionals and the whole process is chaotic and not very organized. What they have going for them though is a lot of passion for what they're doing and no matter how messy it is, they're doing it for the pure joy of it, which in turn makes it enjoyable to watch. It's silly, but because they're having a great time performing, you're having a great time watching it. They end up getting the chance to have one performance at London's West End and as you're seeing their rehearsal process, you feel like it's going to be an absolute disaster. How it turns out, you're just going to have to watch the documentary and see, but I had a ton of fun with this one. The backstage process can get a little bit repetitive, but to my surprise, Alien on Stage turned out to be a lovely, heartwarming gem of a documentary. The other documentary I really want to put on your radar is Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched, which is a long and fascinating exploration of folk horror films. Starting back in the 60s, this documentary covers an insane amount of films leading up to present day and features insightful opinions of many interviewees. This is an absolute must watch for horror fans and particularly for those who have an interest in folk horror. It talks about the cultural significance of these films, about the historical and societal context of when and why they were made, how the themes reflected what was going on at the time. It's a deep dive into not only how this subgenre developed in the US, but also around the world. There are so many films this documentary is going to put on your radar. The drawbacks for some people might be the runtime. The film is is 3 hours and 14 minutes long, and the fact that this really isn't for someone who's looking for an introduction to the subgenre. It's very detailed and interesting, and from the very beginning it jumps right into the thick of it. The filmmakers do not spend much time easing you in because there is so much to explore, but the target audience of horror fans is going to find this documentary very informative and fascinating. Fascinating. Finally, let's talk about some sci-fi and fantasy. If a quirky comedy is what you're looking for here, I think you might enjoy Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes. This is a fun time loop comedy with a lot of personality. It's about a cafe owner who discovers that a TV in his cafe is suddenly showing images from two minutes into the future. From there, the film starts playing with that idea, expanding and exploring it. And I have to say, I cannot imagine how much planning this required because the whole thing is shot in one take. For those of you who enjoy watching a simple sci-fi concept develop through building on itself while also keeping things lighthearted, Beyond the Infinite Two Minutes is going to be an absolute gem. Because of the nature of this concept, it does 
does get repetitive from time to time, especially since you're often watching the same interactions play out from different points in time. But it did not bother me too much because that's kind of the point of the film and it's only 70 minutes long. Plus, the film has so much personality, it's a lot of fun, and I guarantee there will be points at which you'll be wondering how this was even shot. Thankfully, you'll get a look behind the scenes and an answer to some of these questions during the credits. Now, I love a good vampire story. One of my favorite films in that subgenre is the Swedish masterpiece Let the Right One In, and I have to say, when I was watching the Spanish fantasy horror drama All the Moons, I kept thinking back to that film. The story is about a girl who is badly hurt but ends up being saved by a vampire and turned into one of them. Unfortunately, she is soon left alone and without much experience with her new life, she has to figure out how to survive and blend in among humans. First of all, this is a beautifully shot dark fairy tale. It doesn't really go for the typical vampire movie tropes and even puts its own twist on some of the traditional vampire lore. Second, it's much more focused on the character's journey, on the community, humanity, and on the fragility of human existence. What is it that makes life so precious? That's what this film wants to examine. All the Moons is a gentle, atmospheric vampire story that isn't really interested in fangs or bites on the neck. Instead, it lures the viewers in with warm heartfelt moments and wants to show its lead character rediscovering life and family after losing everything. This is the film that won the Best Director Award and Best International Feature Audience Award as well as received a jury special mention for its cinematography at Fantasia. All of those very well deserved. I really hope you guys will get the chance to watch this one soon. It's easily one of my top favorites from the festival. Another one of my biggest favorites of Fantasia 2021 is Glass House, a post-apocalyptic drama that sometimes crosses over into psychological thriller territory. The film revolves around a mother and her three daughters surviving in an isolated, sealed-off house after the world has been destroyed by something called the shred. The air has become toxic and people who inhale it begin suffering from something very similar to dementia. The easiest way to describe this film is to say that Glass House is a post-apocalyptic take on The Beguiled. It's about a stranger who comes in and changes the family dynamic. Aside from the very talented cast and the moody cinematography and setting, what I loved about the film is how it explores the concept concept of memories, traditions, and family rituals, how much those things define our identities, even though something like memory is not the most reliable thing. This is a movie that's really interesting to discuss and analyze. There is so much there about how we remember, what we choose to remember, how we process life, how our roles within a family circle or a community play into all of this. Glass House leaves you with a lot to think about and the ending really brings the story and its themes together. I once again cannot wait for more people to see this film. I would love to re-watch it myself and discuss it with you guys. Definitely keep an eye out for the eventual release of Glass House. And that is it for my picks of the best films of Fantasia 2021. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found some movies that you will be looking for forward to. I also have the Toronto International Film Festival to cover and that is going to be coming within the next couple of weeks. We have so much to talk about. I mean, aside from film festivals, there's a lot of interesting stuff coming out. So look out for a lot more videos on my channel starting now because I finally have a decent amount of time to film and tell you about everything I've been watching. Let me know what you have been watching lately. What were your favorites of the summer? 
What are you looking forward to this fall? Let's talk about everything in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. A special thank you to all my patrons with an extra special thank you to the patrons whose names are on the screen right now. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. And of course, I hope all of you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. All of my social media links will be down in the info box below and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!